Here we go, super fight set to get underway. It is Bia, Bia Mishkita against the former I'm UFC ready. Bantamweight champ, Misha Tate. TJ DeSantis, Brandon McCaffrey, Michael Chiesa, Claudia Gadelia. Live inside the UFC Apex, and we are underway. Hard hands from both Ooh. females right away. <laughs> oh. I mean, these are borderline palm strikes, guys. Yeah, save the combat jujitsu for Sunday. And this is what I expected here. We're going to see Bia try to work towards her guard. She's so good right here. And you can see Misha's just roughing her up, trying to smother her, get a hand across the mouth. I think Misha's a little, uh, like, are you really think you're going to hard hands me? I'm the MMA fighter. <laughs> what do you think you're doing in there? Claudia, what do you think that says? Uh, it sort of sets the tone of, of the aggression here for, for Mishkita. I love, they both very aggressive, right? So I was expecting that kind of match between the two of them. Misha wanted to compete a high level BJJ uh, competitor for so long. So that's, that's her doing the thing she wanted to do right there. And both of those girls, they have a lot of experiences and combined, right? Like Bia right. with the grappling and, and Misha having like the best grappling in her weight division in MMA. So I'm so excited about this. Yeah, I mean, I think it took all the air out of Justin Bernard's lungs to get through the accolades of these women <laughs> in the introduction. <laughs> Me and Michael were going, <laughs> <laughs> just champion, champion, champion. And they left out the Big Brother Celebrity Championship on okay, Misha stop. Tate's uh, <laughs> oh, track as well. Yeah. She won that last year. You know, and it's it's interesting because both of these females are like, it's like they're catching each other at a crossroads because of Bia obviously talking about how she wants to transition right. into MMA. And, and I'm not saying Misha's transitioning away from mixed martial arts, but she's finding herself going back to her roots. So it's like both these females are at a crossroads, kind of eclipsing each other, going different directions in their careers. That's what makes this match very interesting to me. Mishkita switch sides of that uh, body triangle here in the guard. Claudia, what do you think about the, the guard posture here of Mishkita? With that closed guard in the triangle position, it doesn't seem like she's the most active or aggressive here. Yeah, she's kind of like holding that arm, which is like very tight right there. She's, I think she's gonna hit her arm bar pretty soon. She's just like looking for the space to move the hip away. And um, Misha is holding onto that arm because she knows she, you know, it, Bia is very good in, on, on that, that arm bar. Bia looks like she's setting up a triangle choke to me here. She's using her left arm as an overhook and she's weaved through right hand on the wrist, creating a figure four there. And she's gonna look to use that to try to push that elbow through and maybe get into a triangle choke position. Yeah, I mean, she's really going Ooh. hard with that overhook with her left hand. And that's really setting up this sweep, this setting up a lot of offense for her from her guard. Nice balance by Tate so far. Wow. The way, the way Bia was holding that arm was so tight, right? And then she went and held the other arm as well, so Misha couldn't really move. And she still has a grip on that elbow right there, but Misha wise to it, pummels her arm out. Now Bia looking to smash past her, possibly get Misha to roll over, give up her back. Three minutes down here in regulation. We still have like seven minutes, right? And everything Bia does is so tight. And strong too. Look out, her hips are so heavy in this position. She's popped up higher with her mount now, looking to isolate, maybe get to this arm triangle. Misha gonna have to be careful on the opposite side. You know, kind of an interesting thing for Bia. It's it, when females, when they have the braids, it's like when she's on top of her and mount, she's reaching across her head like that. Essentially, it's like little handles. Right. Can, grips. It, it, you can, the ref can't catch you digging your fingers into those those braids, but I mean, it's almost inevitable if you're going to go with that attack that you almost have a little extra grip there. Oh, yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> 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 Two knees on the face. So. <laughs> Bia driving a lot of pressure through her hips really making this an uncomfortable spot. And as long as Misha's got her elbow isolated up higher than her shoulder like that, it's gonna be very hard for her to create any kind of effective escape. She is creating a frame with her left arm. It's keeping Bia from pushing up higher into a spot where she can get to that arm triangle finish, but Misha just not able to create any movement defensively. Yeah, I mean, Bia's just smothering her right now, not giving her any room to breathe. The only movements that she's gonna allow Misha to have are ones that's gonna be, that are gonna expose her. Ones that's gonna force Misha to give up her back and expose her, or oh, oh. potentially isolate a limb like oh, this oh, right she, now. She gotta... That's it's nasty. Right yeah. It's almost more of like a wrist lock than anything. It was a wrist lock. Yeah, and I thought maybe she was trying to, you know, frame up that uh, Americana, the key lock, but uh, Tate able to get her hand free, but still very much in a precarious situation with Mishkita riding this mount. Tate got to be careful here. You can get away with that in MMA sometimes, reaching up and holding the body with both arms, because 
I mean, you need to sometimes to stop the striking. Yeah. But that elbows that far away from the body in a pure grappling contest, Very a lot dangerous. of these specialists will slide in there and take advantage of that. Claudia, how taxing is this for Misha Tate to be in the bottom of this mount? It's very tiring to be down there. And, and as you see, Bia is not giving Misha any space to move. So Misha is like trying to survive there, but there's no space to move. Yeah, I like how she shelved that elbow in front of thigh right there. I mean, Bia is just in cruise control at this point. She's just, it doesn't look like she's really exerting very much effort. And it looks like Misha is really, really having to struggle to try to get something going. Very patient here is Mishkita in this position. Looking to go on back now. Thought yeah. she was going to go to some type of chair sit position there. As you can see, she was starting to sit off the side of Misha. She was down on the hip, but now she's locking up that, oh. that key lock. Yeah, she's still behind the head on the other side. It's going to be hard to finish it, but if she can pull her right elbow around to the other side of the head, she can create the torque she needs for the finish. And if there's something that, that people have grown to know about Misha, she's one of the most resilient fighters you will ever see. If you go back to her fights with Ronda Rousey, she is not afraid to, to let her limb go if need be necessary, if she can't get caught and escape with the Gonna get a reset here in the center of the map. This is what Misha needs. This is a breath of fresh air. Right. This, this repositioning, take a couple big breaths, reset, regroup. This is big for her. I mean, if she can find a way to hang on to this until overtime, she's got to stay alive against one of the greatest players of all time mounted on her. But if she can find, oh, look at that. Just gets her foot across. Going for this Hail Mary escape. The thing with that, if it does work out, it ends up in a leg lock position. Yeah, that's very true. Could be looking to step around for this triangle choke. Good angle created here by Bia. She can get her knee back to the inside. Starting to stuff that wrist to the chest. It's a She's night of triangle ready. chokes, it, Michael. It really is, and Misha wise to it. Back to where they spent the majority of this match. Seven minutes Bia down, three to go here in regulation. Bia Mishkita maintaining this mount position on top of Misha Tate. You mentioned that match between Mishkita and Juliana Miller. Uh, you know, it was a similar match in the sense that Mishkita seemed to control regulation and Miller ended up winning in, in overtime. It'll be interesting to see what this looks like if it goes another two minutes and 40 seconds and what Misha Tate has in overtime. But two and a half minutes with someone like being Mishkita on top of you, that is a long time. That's an eternity. Right. That, that's half of an MMA round and we've seen in that realm of combat sports, two and a half minutes, a lot can happen. And it's, it's tiring for Misha being down there the whole, like the whole entire match almost, right? right? Mishkita posturing up again. Oh, nice work, creating an off there balance go. by Misha. Good Thanks job, Misha. Done. You know what, man, it looked like Bia got a little bit bored of being in the position she was in. She sat up, offered a little too much space. Yeah. And when she did, Misha created just a quick off balance, shoved her off, got her knee back to the inside, and Bia just unaffected. You know what, I'll just come back. Yeah, I mean, that was good on Misha. She she created that opportunity from Bia kind of letting off the gas a little bit, but I think Bia now Ooh, wise to it. She, she can't lay off the gas with Misha. She's got to stay on her, even if it's not This is a big problem. Oh, that is nice. Kimura isolated. The arm is completely out of the mix. She's sliding her leg through. She's got to get that elbow to her chest if she's going to go on bar. A lot of time to work here. Just under 90 seconds. Bia has just one of the best arm locks in the world, male or female. When she grabs that arm and gets control and able to isolate that, I've seen her take some arms and turn them completely the other way. Interesting how Misha's kind of hooking her own leg. Oh, what a back take. What an attack. Oh, man, she got right over the chest. Yeah, Going belly down now is Tate on a hip, trying to fight this rear naked choke attempt. That was a very fast transition for Bia Mesquita. Misha is so resilient. Oh, she is. I mean, she's, I, I say this all the time, Misha Tate, hands down bar none, male or female, one of the toughest competitors I've ever met in my life. She is like, if you go back to her fights with Julie Kedzie, like, I mean, she will, she, she's tough. She's almost knocked out in that fight and still won. Yeah, she, she took a shin upside the head, said, yeah. screw this, I'm still going to win. So. 
you know, that's why she welcomes challenges like this. A match with Bia Mosquita, she's not afraid of any woman. You know, yeah. she, she'll go out there and compete and, and compete at her best against anybody. So it doesn't surprise me that she's still in this match right now. Look at that gripping that Bia is using. Like, she's just like, look, I don't care where my fingers go. I'm going <laughs> to grab your face and I'm going to open your throat. Short time here as regulation is about to expire. Ah! We are headed to overtime. Here we go. You know, still a, a, a lot left to go here as the drama builds in overtime, but a bit of a moral victory, I think, for Misha Tate, who was in, you know, a lot of tough positions underneath Bia Mishkita, but now she's going to find herself in overtime. And, and Mishkita wise to it, not going with back control, because yeah. that gives Misha the opportunity to, to, to take her back, and Misha has great back control. There you go, she chooses the armbar. Yep, <laughs> playing to her strengths. Did you open some points? Time to ready, ready, set, go! Top of the first overtime here with B. Mishkita in this armbar position on Misha Tate. She does allow Tate to get back to her knees here, so. She's trying to get her knee across. She's got to be careful with that, though. Even if the knee does get across, we saw that position happen with Fowler and Shigoli just yep. a little bit ago did get to the angle that he wanted with the feet on the other side, but that really, in a lot of ways, limits your movement defensively and really just kind of leaves the arm hanging out there. Yeah, she's trying to squeeze her knee in between Mosquita's arm and her body. Still a pretty good grip here for Tate. She's got her entire hand on the inside of the figure four. And she's white knuckling right now. <laughs> she, she's like hanging on, to, hanging on to that bicep for dear life right now. Yeah, she's got a, a little bit of her arm bone on the inside of that lock, so it is creating a little bit of structure for her instead of just hanging on with the fingers, but she's definitely locked in, but so far. Oh, a little foot on the face, yeah. a la uh, Maximo Blanco versus Pat Healy and Strikeforce, TJ taking it all the way back there. I love you digging into the archive, which yeah. is available on UFC Fight Pass, by the way. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Tate has to be careful here. This is where the arm does get extended. This is exactly the spot I was talking about. There's the tap. Bia Mishkita getting the submission in the top of the first. So now Misha Tate will go on offense here in the bottom of the first. And she's going to have to get a submission quicker than Mishkita did in order to win this match. And, man, T Tate worked all that time to get her knee both her knees back to the other side of the body, but that was the thing that was her undoing. It opened up the arm lock. She should have just stayed in the same position when she had her one knee wedged in between Bia's arm and body. I mean, you're best to just ride out to overtime to give you the opportunity to get the same position and get a finish faster than Bia did. My unofficial time here, not official, 80 seconds is about what she has to make this happen. So she's got to get the submission faster than Bia was able to get the submission to win the overtime. She's going hard on it right now. She's a little too extended right now. She yeah, needs I don't to, like she the needs, she's pulling. No, she needs to get her, her chest on Bia's elbow and then extend with her back. Oh, but look at this, though. Saw that movement in that arm trying to re-grip is Mishkita. She's Tate going hard on it right now. Ah! Oh, extended, but able to pull free is Bia Mishkita. She gets a submission in the top half, escapes in the bottom, and she's gonna walk out tonight with a hand raise as she defeats Misha Tate. Nicely done for Beatrice Mishkita to make this one official. Here's Justin. Ladies and gentlemen, in overtime, referee Victor Davila calls a stop to the match for your winner by submission via armbar, Bia Mishkita! Beatrice Mishkita getting it done. An armbar stoppage in the top of the first overtime. And that's for the win as she's able to escape in the bottom of the first. Nice bit of sportsmanship by these two ladies. Great matchup. Claudia Gedalia, you're in the house tonight, taking uh, in the Fight Pass Invitational. What were your uh, thoughts here? Oh, Michael Kies is now going to get Bia Mesquita's thoughts. Okay. I'm here with the winner, Bia Mesquita. Bia. <laughs> Very tough match, and you know, you're, you've had this Hall of Fame career. Where do you keep drawing motivation and inspiration to continue to compete in grappling? Uh, I think to show like today that my grappling is the best in the world motivated me a lot, and to make people that watch me believe 
no matter where they, they are, what age they are, what academy, just believe yourself, fight for your dream, and you can be here. There you go. <laughs> now, <laughs> you've talked about wanting to transition into mixed martial arts. Yeah. Does getting win over Misha Tate in a match like this as you begin to embark on that journey give you a lot of promise as you, as you move into this new chapter of your career? Yeah, 100%. Today, oh, actually, when I did a step to the fight, that's what my thought was, uh, to do my last grappling fight against such a huge name as Misha. Uh, UFC champion, you know, it's a, such an honor. And now I feel that I'm ready to take the next step and do my MMA debut in 2023. Well, that was a sensational performance. Everybody give it up for Bia Mesquita. Bia Mesquita getting it done tonight. Gets past Misha Tate. A submission in overtime. It was a, you know, pretty good performance all around through regulation. Mesquita was in control, but uh, Claudia Gadelia ultimately the arm bar gets it done in OT. Yeah, two legends of the sport competing against each other, you know. Of course, Bia has that high-level grappling that, you know, no question, she is like one of the best ever. You know, Misha hanged in there for quite a bit. I was a little surprised, like, how much she, she held on to Bia's level of grappling. And I just loved the match. Amazing. Yeah, I think there's some moral victories being made for Misha Tate. Yeah, I think so. Misha came out, she stayed in the game all the way through regulation against, again, probably the best female grappler that we've ever seen. So she stayed in the game, not able to produce much offensively, but still great showing for both ladies. But ultimately, it's Bia Mishkita starting off her journey towards MMA with a big win.